Hi, I'm Amy Eisenstein, and today I'm here with Jim Greenfield, who is the author of 10 books. He has worked at universities and hospitals. He was one of the first CFREs and one of the first ACFREs, and I am so excited to have him here. Hi, Jim. Good morning. Thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Today we're going to talk about the GIG and the FEP. Oh, you get to explain that now. <laughs> Tell us what those are. <laughs> well, the Growth and Giving Initiative and the Fundraising Effectiveness Project. Yes. The Fundraising Effectiveness Project has been in operation as a project of the AFP Research Council since 2006. So we're in our 12th year of gathering data on donors and their behavior with regard to their engagement with nonprofits. Currently, we have about 13,000 nonprofits participating in the program. Great. Something in excess of 100 million gifts over those many years. So we have big data. Yeah, that is big <laughs> data. Are you able to share some of the results? What can you tell us about the findings? Every year we, w we monitor several aspects of this because one of the things that nonprofit organizations are interested in is how much money did we raise or how are we doing raising money? And so we have data on the gifts. The information that we receive to drive all of this is the actual identification number which is anonymized. I didn't know you could anonymize people. Yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> Just a number, an identification number, mm -hmm. an amount of gift, and date of gift. Yeah. And then we put that into an Excel worksheet, and then it grinds away. For example, if an organization were to submit their information, cash transactions, not pledges, not planned gifts, et cetera, just their cash transactions, to the fundraising fitness test, mm -hmm. which is where you start, and they get back several reports, actually quite a few reports with a lot of data that allows them to see how their performance in many areas, for example, not just how much did they raise, but how much did they raise last year compared to this year and what difference did it make? Mm. But what we're really interested in is how many donors did they acquire, how many did they renew, how many gave the same, how many gave less, how many upgraded. Yeah. And so we can then look across the spectrum by, because we can divide it by gift size or gift level. So we have under 100 and 100 to 250 on up to 5,000 and above. Okay. So an organization can look and see across the spectrum, for example, that they lost four $5,000 donors last year who didn't repeat. Oh. Now, as a fundraiser, it's like, yikes, <laughs> Yeah. what's going on and where did they go and do we know and have we talked to them and et cetera. How do you uh, get people, to, where does the data come from? Who are the participating <laughs> organizations, I guess? Well, the 13,000 are actually, uh, the information comes from their donor software management firm. Okay. So Donor Perfect or uh, Neon, etc., are the data providers. Bloomerang. Bloomerang. Yeah. And uh, eTapestry, which is actually Blackboard. Yep. And so those folks provide the data anonymized to us. Okay. But an individual organization can submit its information direct to the fitness test. Oh, great. Where do they find that? The, it's on the AFP FEP website. That's www.afpfep.org, and all the information about how to submit. Oh, great. Now, the fundraising fitness test is administered by PSI. PSI is the office called Phil Philanthropic Services for Organizations of the Adventist Church National Headquarters. And there's a, a young man there by the name of Randy Fox. Okay. who you can talk to and get your information presented correctly, and he runs it in about 20 seconds oh. and sends back 11 reports with a lot of information. And so then using your own information, you can compare that against the national statistics. Oh, great. So what kind of, what kind of results or what kind of data are people looking for? What is the most useful data? I know you mentioned a few points. <laughs> Well, one of the things that we've been tracking and are very uh, conscious of is that for the last 10 years, the actual donor renewal rate has declined. 
even though we've raised more money, mm. at this group has raised more money. So yeah. if, if an organization reports back or receives a report back that their retention rate is 62% of their donors from the prior year, yeah. they compare that to the national group mm -hmm. and it's 45 or 46% and they look pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they have to start also comparing themselves year over year. Yes. Right? And that's really the first level of performance evaluation is it yourself. Yeah. So here is a set of data, and we can take you and give you a six-year background report. Mm. So how are you doing over the six years? Fundraising goes in cycles. You're in a campaign, you're out of the campaign, and it's hard to kind of keep that level of enthusiasm until the next campaign, et cetera. So the giving performance of all organizations varies from year to year, but you want to monitor and watch how many donors have you acquired and are you acquiring new donors because some are leaving. Right. So if 46% renewed, 54% did not. Yes. Oh, and replacing them is the challenge. Yeah. Is the challenge. As we know, acquiring new first time donors is expensive and yeah. takes time. Then we have to renew them, and if we renew them a third time, they usually will stay with us. Yeah, what does the data show us on that? Do you have the statistics? Five to seven more years. That's really significant. And what's happening in that period of time, if we pay attention to them, if yeah. we make nice, mm -hmm. they can increase their gifts, they can do more than one gift, mm -hmm. and so their value to the organization as a loyal supporter just increases. Yeah, so when organizations find that they don't have good retention rates, or even if they do, what can they do to improve their retention rates? It's called donor stewardship. Yes. <laughs> we all know what that means. Yes. I just call it the department of make nice. Yeah. That's what we do, and that's what we should do more of, but we can now look at the performance and see, for example, the four $5,000 donors that did not give again. Mm. Where did they go or what happened? Let's reach out to them and see if we can recover them. Yeah, so, and the data will show or help organizations figure out which donors didn't renew? By giving level. Yeah. By giving level. Wow. Now there's a group in the middle, 250 and above, 1,000 and above, that's where significantly great wealth also resides, and these are very good donors. These yeah. are donors who have a potential for growing for the organization. Not only is their continuation valid and important for us, yeah. but they can obviously stay with us and grow. They are the best candidates for upgrading. Excellent. Any, any last thoughts, any other um, results you'd want, want to share or specific <laughs> data points that you want people to pay attention to? Well, I'd like really to encourage organizations to submit their data to PSI and get their fitness test reports. Then they can use that as a, as a guide against the benchmarks or the guidelines that the Fundraising Effectiveness Program provides. And that can help them help them sort out. Now, if they're, say, acquisition rates or renewal rates or upgrade rates are not quite in the same ballpark. Again, these are small to mid-sized organizations, fundraising of $10 million or less. Okay. That's 80, 85% of all nonprofits in that size. Yeah. So they can see themselves relatively against a reasonable comparison. Yeah. So the guidelines can be very helpful to guide them into how they might or where they might focus. Oh, that's great. Okay, good. So we'll have those links available for folks so that they can go ahead and input their own data. Yes. All right, excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing this amazing resource. Um, I'm, I'm sure that people will really flock to it once they know about it. So <laughs> well, we hope so, but we're ready for them if they come. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Amy. Take care, Jim. Thanks so much for joining me. For even more videos, interviews, tools, and resources, I hope you'll visit my website, amyeisenstein.com, and subscribe to my weekly newsletter.